If you own a portable power station, generator, or power inverter like you see right here, then you're definitely going to want to watch this video. Years ago, when I lived on an out island in the Bahamas, I made an inverter generator that I used for five years to power lighting, televisions, fans, my computer, as well as the refrigerator in the event of power outages. If you're new to my channel and have not seen that video, there will be a link posted at the end of this video. Keep in mind, it was made 10 years ago when I uploaded videos to YouTube just for the hell of it. Little did I know that YouTube would end up becoming a full-time job and my videos would be watched by close to 90 million viewers to date. Now, even though portable power stations, generators, and power inverters are designed to have a surge rating, sometimes it's not enough to get a particular load to start up. And that was the case with me when I was in the Bahamas. I had a freezer that needed to be powered up, and every time I tried starting it up, the inverter would go into overload, I would have to reset, try it a few times, and then finally would power up the freezer. The generator or inverter could have no problem powering the load, it's that startup current or inrush current that the unit cannot handle. When using resistive loads, the problem is non-existent, but when you use an inductive load, that's when you're going to observe the problem. So in this video, I'm going to show you an extremely useful tip that's gonna help you get those higher inrush current inductive loads to start right up with your generator or power inverter. Now the power inverter that I'm going to be using for this demonstration has a 1000 watt surge rating, and I think this is a 750 continuous. So let me turn this on. I'm going to plug in this angle grinder. It has a very high inrush current. And I'm now going to try powering it up. And as you just saw, we're in overload. It will not start this up. So let's reset, try it again. it will not get it to run. Let me show you what you can do. Here we go. Plug this in right over here. I'm going to take this plastic box and just leave it off to the side. You see it says L and H, low and high. This is the other end. I'm going to plug in the angle grinder. Now let's try it again. And as you just saw, it worked perfectly using this right here in series with the power inverter. Let me show you exactly what this is and how you can make one. Now in order to make this, you're going to need an appliance extension cord. This one right here is 14 gauge. It can handle up to 15 amps and you can see the plug is grounded. Make sure you have a grounded plug. You're going to find the center of the extension cord and you're gonna cut it in half. In addition to the cord, you're going to need a single plastic electrical box. This one has half inch threads on each end. You're going to need Romex clamps. You're going to need some nylon ties and you're going to need an on off switch that can handle up to 15 amps. If you take a closer look at the box, you can see there are holes drilled on the side. Mine is rated for use up to 12 amps and you'll see why in a minute. And on the opposite side, there is also holes drilled. The plastic box is going to need adequate ventilation. Let me unscrew this so you can take a look at the inside. Now on the right side, this is where the power comes into this box. And you can see the green, that's the ground. You're going to have a connect and go all the way through out the opposite side and to the female plug. You're going to take the white wire that's coming in from the power, that's the neutral, and you're going to make that feed through all the way to the female plug as well. Over here, you can see the switch contacts. It's either on or off, meaning there's continuity between these two pins, or there's no continuity. And you can see those wires go right over to here. Let me spin this around so you can take a very good look at what's on this side. Right here, you can see the hot wire comes in from the plug, and it goes directly to this component. The wire was stripped, about a half of an inch of it, wrapped around the lead, soldered, and then heat shrink applied. What this component is, is an SG333. It's an NTC inrush current limiter. 
And the way it's designed, there's a set value of resistance. In this case, it's five ohms. And when the circuit is first turned on, you're going to have a very short duration where there's going to be five ohms of resistance in series with the device or appliance being powered. Very quickly, this is going to heat up. And when this heats up, it's called NTC because it's negative temperature coefficient. So the resistance is going to drop as the temperature rises. And that's exactly what you want because the value of this component is going to drop down to an extremely low level of around 0 0.01 ohms or even lower. While the device is in use, this is going to be generating some heat and that's why you want to have holes inside this plastic box so you can have adequate airflow. Over here you can see the other lead of the component is tied into another one. And then from this point here, it connects to the black wire going to the female plug where you would plug in, in this case, the angle grinder. Now the reason why there's two is because this one is five ohms and this one is five ohms. You can see the switch right here, I showed you a minute ago, connects across the leads of the second component. So when I put it in the low position, I'm only going to be having five ohms of resistance added to the circuit, but if it's not enough and the device does not power up, or the inverter goes into overload, then what I'm going to do is add on an additional five ohms. So we're going to have a total of 10 ohms of resistance. And the way that's going to work is when the switch is in the off position, you're going to have no continuity between these pins. So the current is forced to flow directly through both components and into the female plug and then into the load. When this is in the on position, these two leads are going to be shorted through the switch. So this component here will be removed from the circuit. You'll only have one, and then it flows through the switch to the load. As you can see, I position these that they're angled away from the side of the box, more towards the center, and you want to do that so it's easier for these to have airflow passing around them. I'm going to be placing a link in the video description area to the data sheets for these surge guard inrush current limiters. The most important thing when choosing these is the current rating. Each one of these is rated for 12 amps max. If you have a 15 amp load, then you're going to want to choose the correct one that can handle up to 15 amps. If you have a much smaller inverter, a 300 watt, you're not going to be needing a 12 amp inrush current limiter. You may want to use a 5 amp. So you're definitely going to want to refer to the data sheets to make it much easier for you to choose the correct size. The setup that you see right here is pretty useful. You may just want to copy this so if you have a 10 amp or a 12 amp load that you're trying to start, including a refrigerator, this setup should help you greatly. Okay, let me very quickly go over the schematic. Okay, here's the schematic. You can see the 120 volt male plug, that's the line. This is what you're going to be plugging into your generator, portable power station, or inverter. That's the hot wire or the black. Everything is going to be 14 gauge. The neutral and the ground. You can see the ground feeds into the plastic box. You got the wire nut and it goes right back out. The neutral is the exact same thing. The hot goes in. It goes to one of the SG333 inrush current limiters. Goes into another inrush current limiter. And then it goes straight out to the load. That's the 120 volt female end. In my case, that's where I connected up the angle grinder. Over here is the single pole 12 amp to 15 amp switch. It's connected in parallel with one of the inrush limiters. So when this is closed, current flows directly across. When it's open, it goes in and through. The switch that I used is only a 12 amp rated switch. It matches the inrush limiter. Now the NTC inrush current limiters could be used in series like you see here to increase resistance but you never want to place these in parallel. And the reason for that, they're not exactly the same when they're made. So what's going to happen if you have two in parallel, when the current flows through, one of these is going to heat up first. When it heats up first, the resistance is going to drop to a very low level. And if you were trying to make this a 24 amp by using two in parallel, you're going to end up having the majority of that current go into one of the 12 amp rated inrush limiters. And what's going to happen, it is going to burn up. Once one of them burns up, 
than the entire load, which could be as high as 24 amps, if that's what your intention was, would burn up the other one, and then you would have no connection between. So only use these in series. Try and use one that's rated to handle the load that you're using. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my wide range of videos for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.